Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and on today's episode of Cheap Shots, we're going to show you how to cheaply paint up a Kroot Far Stalker Kin Band from Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. Now, you can use these guys in Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team or from Warhammer 40,000 or like we use in our studio for Necromunda. As you can see, we have a beautiful tabletop finish that will help you guys to paint these guys up very quickly and more importantly very cheaply now by using the techniques and craft paints and materials that we suggest on this video you're going to talk about a grand total investment of $33.82 this is of course assuming that you're purchasing all these materials for the very first time you'll be purchasing most of these materials from Walmart maybe from Hobby Lobby if you can't find your local Walmart now when you compare that with the materials that you need to purchase from Army Painter as well as Citadel you're talking about a grand total savings of $191.43 to paint up this kill team so with that being said let's go ahead and get this video on a roll and talk about how you can cheaply and quickly paint up your far soccer kin bands so the very first step of course is to glue and assemble your miniatures. These new kits that came out from Warhammer 40,000 uh, kill team for the Farstalker kin band is actually quite uh, diverse. You can make either a squad of warriors or you can make individual kill team operatives. Uh, it's pretty much up to you how you want to do it. And as you can see in this uh, assembly here, I just kind of did a general of assembly. A couple of guys with some scattered guns. A lot of guys mainly armed with like some of the heavy weapons as well as the special weapons that come with it. And if you notice, I also have a prime miniature in the back as well. That guy is the Kroot Bounty Hunter special character from Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress that came out oh years ago you can still avail, actually still purchase copies of it um, but I like that little guy we look like so I decided to throw him directly into this kill team as well because we're planning on using this kill team for our games on Nicaragua in our Anarchy Road campaign. So once you guys have these guys assembled and put on the bases to whatever desire you like next thing we do first is to texture the bases. So on this slide, as you can see, I have now textured my bases. I use a very simple formula in order to texture my bases. It just involves sand, wood glue, and water. All you do is you take the cheapest wood glue you can find, paint it directly all over the brush, all over the base that you want the texture to be in, and then you dip the entire base in sand. And now I'm not using any kind of special modeling sand or ballast from train kits. I'm just using the sand I get from my garden in my backyard. Just make it really, really simple. Just dust it real quick to whatever areas that you want texture. And once that dries, what you'll do then is you'll make a slurry combining a 50-50 mixture of wood glue and water you mix those two together until about the consistency of milk and then of course you just apply it like a wash all over the top of the texturing now when it dries it creates an airtight seal to make sure the texturing does not come flaking off of your uh, bases as well it also acts as a nice sealant and also kind of gives it an interesting texture as well and once you're done letting that dry your texturing is done next thing we got to do on is move on to a primer so the next step, of course, is to prime miniatures. We're using Rustoleum Flat White Primer. I can get this stuff at my local Walmart for about $3.99. It's a really cheap, basic white primer, and all I'm gonna do is just an all-over spray all over the entirety of the miniature. Now, in case if you're unaware, what primer does is that primer actually creates a surface for your acrylic paints to adhere to. If you just take your acrylic paints and apply it to bare plastic, there's not enough surface tension on the plastic to keep the acrylic paint uh, bound to your miniature. So if you even handle it just a little bit, it'll just come rubbing off and it'll ruin your finish on your miniature. So priming helps to solve that problem by giving a more uh, adhesive surface for your acrylics to adhere to. At the same time as well, your prime coat here base coating also has a lot to do with the brightness and the vibrancy of the colors that you'll use on your miniatures. Uh, traditionally speaking, you want to use a white primer for a very vibrant or, bri or, vibrant or colorful uh, type of paint scheme for your miniatures. You use black for more of a darker or shadowy looking kind of paint color coloring scheme for your miniatures, or you use gray to just kind of act as a medium tone. Now for me, I like to use white, and the reason why is because we're using a quick paint method when it comes to painting up this kill team, meaning we're gonna be using a really thick oil wash that's really gonna darken down the vibrancy of the colors that we use and bring down that value. So that's the reason why I like to go with the white undercoat, so that way when that occurs, it doesn't darken and mute our colors too badly on that one. So now that we're done uh, priming our miniatures, the next thing to do, of course, is start paint all the flesh. Now these guys are actually quite easy to paint uh, in terms of their flesh, because the reason why is because a lot of their skin is exposed on these ones. Now, on, I added a variety of colors on this to make it different shades of green as well as different colors, because I wanted this crew kill team to look a little bit more varied in the color schemes of its skin tones. I didn't want to make them all in one, one uniform color. Now granted, using a singular uniform color would make it go by very quickly and make it very easy to do, but I'm using this for Nekamunda as well, and we want 
be able to tell these individual miniatures apart from other people. So because of that, as you can see, I use a variety of greens, and I also use some paler colors as well. Plus, at the same time, crude are always mutating according to the lore because they consume the flesh of their victims, and that helps to kind of genetically alter them to make them more deadly predators. And so because that and that variety of skin tone just kind of adds that illusion that these guys have been, you know, feasting on the dead. So as you can see, I use a couple of colors, mainly from Apple Barrel Paint. I used uh, Holly Branch as well as Wintergreen. I used Marsh Green as well as English Ivy Oak, uh, Ivy Vine. And at the same time, I also used Palm Leaf. All those colors, those uh, green colors, can be purchased at your local Walmart by Apple Barrel Paint for about 50 cents from your local Walmart. Now, the other two guys, I painted in Taupe Gray by uh, Anita's Acrylic as well as Light Mocha by Apple Barrel. Apple Barrel, you can get, of course, cost the 50 cents at your local Walmart, while the Taupe Gray from Anita's Acrylic will cost the 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. Now, you can put two thin coats on this all over the parts that you want to be exposed to the flesh, and once that dries, move on to dry brushing. All right, so now for the paler fleshed uh the ones who were painting in light mocha as well as in taupe gray i decided to dry brush those guys in ivory by apple barrel paint you can get this at your local walmart for 50 cents it's very inexpensive and at the same time creates a really awesome effect as well now in case you're not aware what dry brushing is dry brushing is where you just basically dust the miniature and the pigments of your paint and what that does is that the pigments of that paint would adhere to the raised surfaces of the miniatures what this does it creates the illusion of depth in your miniatures by creating highlights where you have a brighter more pastel highlight on the highlighted areas the raised parts of the miniature while the darker base coat states in the recesses now of course this will create your miniatures have a very pastel sort of dusty like texture when you paint these guys up but don't worry that texturing will go away and that pastelness will also fade away as well when we get to the oil wash so just trust in the process and just do that as well now for the miniatures I painted green, I dry brushed them all in exactly the same color, which is Lime Sherber by Apple Barrel Paint. You can get this stuff at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. Now as you can see here, what this does is it kind of creates a unifying color in the, terms, in the sense that they all have the same kind of highlighting color. So they look cohesive as a unit. But at the same time though, there's enough variation of green for the base coats to create a, light, a large variety of different colors on this uh, team as well. So as you can see, it kind of uniforms a little bit with that highlighting, but at the same time though, each guy is still individual. Kind of creates this really subtle uh, tonal skin shift in the different tones of their skin, especially when we go through the oil wash as well. It's really gonna make it really subtle, but at the same time though, it's gonna have a beautiful effect when it's also done as well. So now that you're done dry brushing the flesh of your miniatures, now I start working on some of the details. Now the next dominant feature that's on these miniatures, of course, are the quills. The crew have these awesome kind of quills in the back of their head, as well as along their backs for the crew hounds as well. So for that color, we're using Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel Paint. It costs you 50 cents at your local Walmart. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick up these quills wherever they appear on the miniature and you can put two thin coats on this. Now most of the quills on these miniatures actually appear along the back of the heads as well as the spine. There are some that are poking along the forearms as well as the thigh of these miniatures. So if you find those details, just pick those out really quick and make a really nice little finish and as you can see we're almost pretty much done with the base coating for a lot of these guys in terms of their bodies Next thing we gotta do, of course, is to do a dry brush, as well as a base coat. Now, the reason why we're using a base coat first is for the little hawk falcon thing that's resting on top of the gun barrel of the kneeling crew right in the center of the picture there. I believe that's called a Petra, I believe is what that creature is called. I'm not much of a 40K guy, I just know that's a falcon, a bird of prey of some sort. So for that entire bird of prey, we're gonna pick that on two thin layers of pewter gray of Apple Barrel paint, cost 50 cents to the local Walmart. Now, as for the rest of the interior, uh, the rest of the details that we did for the quills, we're gonna dry brush those real quick with Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel paint, once again, cost a 50 cents at your local Walmart. As you can see, it kind of creates that illusion of death by catching the highlights of the quills while leaving that burnt umber in the finer recesses. And next we're gonna move on now to is the finer details on the crew themselves with their beaks as well as their chitinous armor that's on their chests and bellies. So the next thing we're gonna focus real quick is on the uh, beaks as well as the uh, the chitinous underbellies that these guys have. The crude anatomy is actually kind of interesting. It's like a combination of both avian and it's also reptile as well. The underbellies are basically like the chests as well as their stomachs, and of course we have those beaks as well. Now to help create that illusion of uh, to create that effect, uh, I painted all these guys exactly the same. We use moccasin brown by Anita's acrylic. You can pick this up at your local Hobby Lobby for about 65 cents. It's putting two thin coats along the beaks as well as the underbellies of these guys as well it's a nice contrasting color to the dark umber that we use for umber that we use for their quills at the same time it also kind of contrasts nicely with the greens as well as the tan colors that we use for their flesh tones it creates a lot of diversity on these guys as well so now that we're done actually picking up the beaks the chest as well as the flesh that part is done the rest of the video is actually dedicated to the small details like the weapons as well as their clothing 
So the very first detail we're going to pick out real quick is a little falcon creature that's resting on the top of the gun barrel there. We're going to actually uh, pick out its tail feathers as well as the edge of feathers of its wings and two thin layers of Tuscan teal by Apple Barrel. You can get this at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. It's a nice contrasting color to the gray that we have. At the same time, kind of creates this illusion of an alien type bird with different color schemes that you might normally see. And it's a very eye-catching little detail as well. It's also kind of a cool sculpt too because that tracker, if you look at the base looking down at that footprint and it's kind of like he's got his bird of prey to like act as his long range reconnaissance which is actually pretty cool looking so the very first color we're going to use real quick is pavement by apple barrel paint this is actually a very 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 dark gray almost a black color but the nice thing about the pavement is the pavement actually has a little bit of a grit texture to the paint which is perfect for dry brushing it actually has a really cool finish on this one and we're using this as primarily on all the clothing that the crew are wearing now the crew themselves are not really wearing much clothing aside from the giant dusters and ponchos that they're wearing they really much don't really wear all that much clothing because they're kind of tribalistic and also kind of like uh like tribal kind of like aboriginal kind of uh native American type 5 going on with their clothing so because they mainly have stockings primarily like stockings on their legs along their forearms they might have something around their chest like a vest or something like that they have wrappings around their guns around the crew hounds so all of those details are going to pick out the hoods the stockings the the arm greaves uh, we're going to pick all those out two thin layers of pavement paint by Apple Barrel. Once again, putting two thin layers on all the stockings that we have as well. So as you can see, we have some things going on on the grips of the guns and the forearms. We also have some stockings on their thighs and the legs, as well as some harnesses on their chest. We also have some guys wearing hoods. Wherever those details are popping up, you're picking that two thin layers of pavement paint. And the same thing with the uh, towel gun that the leader of this gang is also carrying as well. I'm not sure what kind of weapon that is that the towel uses. Like I said, I'm not a 40k player, but I also picked out the stock and two thin layers of pavement paint as well. So now that we're done with that detail, time to do a dry brush. All right, so the next thing we do, of course, is to dry brush the miniatures. We do two layers of dry brushing on all the parts we did in pavement. The first one we do dry brushing for is for Peter Gray to kind of carry a, like a mid-tonal kind of highlight shift on all the black that we just painted earlier. And then we're going to do another final highlighting with uh, Folk Arts Pale Gray, uh, catching all those final details as well. What this does, it creates this kind of like grayish kind of uh, uh, gradient effect taking place on the black as well. Now, granted, it's going to brighten up the, uh, the black that we just put on earlier, but don't worry too much. Like I said before, Yes, these guys look very pastel. Yes, they look very chalky. But when we actually use the uh, oil washing method that we're going to use here for later on in the video, it's going to take care of that texture. It's going to blend out those transitions. It's going to look very smooth and also look pretty awesome at the same time. So now that we're done with all the black glove these guys are wearing, let's move on to their dusters and ponchos. Now another really key detail that these guys have are the ponchos that they're wearing, also their serapes. They have kind of like this kind of Clint Eastwood man with no name from the Dollars Trilogy Spaghetti Western vibe going on with these guys. These guys I all wear ponchos, backslash serapes, backslash cloaks I guess you would call them, all for themselves as well. And so since we're using this as a unit of a, of a gang in our Necromunda campaign, we're going to make each of these ponchos a different color so that way you can identify different fighters in this gang. Now we as you can see we have like a rainbow selection. Of colors that we're using so let's go on and talk about doing it this way so we actually painted every single guy having their own individualized color for their poncho to make them easy to deliver so for this one for the apple barrel paint colors i use light blue holly branch king's gold bright magenta ripe tomato wild iris tuscan blue all those are going to cost you 50 cents at your local uh, walmart for that and just put two thin layers on the uh tropas that they're wearing in order to create that illusion that effect of different colors for each of the different guys now we also use anita's acrylic true red as well as Delta Serum Coat Mermaid Blue for another group of guys for their ponchos. Now both of those you can get your local hot value for about 65 cents as well and putting two thin layers on that. What's going to create is this illusion of different colors amongst them so that way you can identify each individual fighter uh, because they're all kind of unique and different from everybody else which makes it really easy to identify on the tabletop. So now that we're done with our base coats, next thing I gotta do of course is a dry brush. Now, while we may have used a variety of colors for the cloaks, the dry brushing, we actually use just a very few colors. So for the orange, as well as for the yellow cloak, we're gonna dry brush those in, a, in uh, Apple Barrel Paints uh, Canary Yellow. You can get this at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. It's a nice, bright, uh, pastel yellow. We do a quick dry brush in order to catch the folds, the rips, the tears, and the, uh, the cloaks that these guys are wearing for both the yellow caped individual as well as the orange caped leader. Now for the guy that we did in Wild Iris, Bright Magenta, as well as Anita's True Click Red, we're going to use Cameo Pink by Apple Barrel. Another beautiful pastel pink color. As you can see, it catches a lot of the raised surfaces and a lot of details that we didn't see earlier from the uh, uh, base coating before. And we're going to use Sky Blue by Apple Barrel Paint for the guys that we did in Light Blue, Tuscan Teal, as well as Mermaid Blue to create that illusion. We're also going to 
put on the feathers of the teal color feathers on the bird of prey that's on the rifle up there and then we of course we use LIM ship Bible Girl paint in order to pick out the uh, cloak of the green cloaked individual as well. So once you are done with the dry brushing, the last thing we need to work on now are the metallic elements. Now for the metallic elements on these guys, we use primarily three colors. We're going to use Folk Arts Copper, Folk Art Gun Metal, as well as Deco Arts Emperor Gold. Now the parts of the interesting thing about these weapons is that if you paint these weapons just all steel gray, you could do that and that is a technique to make your painting go by faster, but it's not as interesting and doesn't create as much interest for the eye. So because of that, I like to kind of divide up and add some metallic details for all the different guns these guys are carrying to make some uh, to make uh, make it look more visually appealing. So the first thing I do, of course, is I'm pretty much what I do is I paint the entirety of the weapon and gunmetal gray first. It's a beautiful dark gunmetal color that's perfect for all the metallic elements that we usually use in our painting videos. I use this color all the time. Cannot recommend it enough. So I paint, basically paint the entirety of the weapons uh, except for the towel rifle that the leader is carrying in that base color. And what I do from there then I then pick out individual details and other metallic colors to create some diversity of color. So for example if you look at the uh, the sniper rifle we're holding a uh, hunter on the right hand side there. It's got this long barrel that's silver right but the stock of the weapon is done in uh, deco art uh, emperor's gold and at the same time that the scope that he's looking down is done in copper to create that visual interest as well i do exactly the same thing for like the guys carrying the pistols do exactly the same thing mix up the colors try to alternate them as best you can in order to make that look now aside from the guns and the weapons that these guys are carrying there's also smaller metallic elements on these guys as well. Things like goggles, for example, on the helmets they're wearing, uh, little charms that they have along their belts as well as their vests. So you wanna pick out the, all those individual elements and make that look really cool as well. For example, the towel blaster, the leader is carrying, for example. I picked out the little, uh, I don't know what you would call that, I guess, the, the barrel, I guess you would call it, the compensator in the barrel or something. I picked that little detail out in copper just to create some visual interest there right, right as well. So once you get all your metallic elements taken care of, next thing we need to do now, of course, is an oil wash. So the next step, of course, is an oil wash. And like I said before, we're using a quick paint method, which means we use only one wash for the entirety of the miniatures, and that is a quick oil wash, which I like to use is mid-wax poly shade acrylic in the Mission Oak color. Now, a lot of players out there, a lot of painters out there like to use uh, Army Painter Strong Tone as their dip wash for the miniature. It is applied as a wash. That's an excellent product. It does exactly as advertised. The uh, problem is it'll cost $32 a can, and that's the only problem with that. Well, as mid-wax poly shade uh, acrylic in Mission Oak, it does exactly the same thing. Thing, but only costs seven dollars, six ninety nine per can. So I like to use the mid wax poly shade because that uh, for that reason. So as you can see right here, I've painted up that wash all over the entirety of the miniature, and as you can see, it looks really awesome right off the bat. A lot of the details that we couldn't see earlier because the base coating and the dry brushing are now brought up by that oil wash. What ends up happening is the oil wash does a couple of things. The first thing that it does is that it creeps into the recess of the miniature, like the individual folds of fabric and flesh, uh, the individual space between the quills, the cording, uh, the textures in the miniatures, and a Dips into those areas, those recesses, bringing out those details and making the appearance looks really good. At the same time, what the oil wash also does too is it also helps blend together the layers of dry brushing as well as base coating that we did earlier. Uh, smooths out that transition. As you can see, the chalky appearance is now completely gone off our miniatures. At the same time, it kind of smooth out those gradient effects caused by the base coating and the dry brushing on top, so it makes it look more like one single tone of paint, which looks really cool. And the very last step that this process also does is that also down the vibrancy of the colors that we had earlier as you can see the value of the colors are much more subdued they're not as bright and as out loud technicolor as they were before and that's the reason why we use such colorful paints to begin with is because we know that the oil wash is going to darken down the values of that and makes it a little bit more pleasing and viewing to the eye as well and the last thing it does it kind of comes and got this kind of like this grimy kind of weathered look going on too now i did make a mistake on this portion of the video with my oil wash uh, the reason why is because um it's the bases. We're gonna use oil wash on the bases later on. What I should have done was paint the bases first and then apply the oil wash. I didn't do that, but we'll talk about that later. And the reason why I'm saying that is because this stuff takes about 24 hours to dry as well as cure. And you want to make sure you don't you leave these guys alone for 24 hours. The reason why is because not only is it a stain in the polyacrylic, but it's also polyurethane also mixed with it as well. So when these miniatures do cure, you're gonna have this nice little high gloss sheen on the miniatures because it creates a sealant to protect your paint jobs on the miniatures as well. Now you don't want to operate these miniatures while they're still drying or they're still wet or still tacky because you could ruin the finish on your miniatures. I highly suggest you make this the last step of your painting process for whatever you do paint so that way you leave it alone, return back to the next day, and you're ready to go. 
So like I said, I kind of made a mistake because I forgot I was going to use oil washing on the bases, but I'm just going to record it like I, I did it. So the first thing we do, of course, is to paint the bases. And since we're planning on using these guys in our games in Necromunda out in the Ash Waste, what better way than to create an Ash Waste type base? All we're going to do is we're going to paint the texture that we did earlier in two th one thin layer of pewter gray. Now, only one thin layer, and the reason why is because, yes, some of the white undercoating from the primer is poking through the gray paint. It's kind of showing through, but that's perfectly fine because we're going to dry brush these things down with a pale gray color. So you're not even going to tell me to tell that was only done in one layer. And as you can see, we dry brush with Folk Arts Pale Gray once again, all over the Peter Gray that we did earlier. So if there was any white showing through the undercoat that we did earlier, it's not going to matter because it's going to look like it's part of the dry brushing. So it's really, really simple as well. Kind of creates this kind of dusty, ashy kind of wasteland vibe going on with the land that they're walking on, especially when we do the oil wash again. So let's go and talk about that real quick. And like I said before, this is where I made a mistake. What I should have done was done the dry brush, the base coating and the dry brushing on the miniatures first, and then did an oil over oil wash. I didn't do that though, so because of that, I do have to wait another day with my paint job. So as you can see here, once again, I put Mission Poly Acrylic uh, uh, Mission Oak uh, color from. Uh, oh, sorry, I use Midwax Poly Acrylic Mission Oak color, and once again, I painted that all over the entirety of the texturing the bases. So as you can see, it kind of creates this kind of dirty, kind of ashy toxic i imagine kind of base coat for these guys as well because that mission oak color really appears really nicely on the grays that we use earlier on the basis is so we create this kind of toxic kind of burnt out oily looking kind of contaminated wasteland base that looks really cool as well and once again we gotta wait 24 hours for this stuff to dry and cure so like I said, if you plan on doing this, my suggestion is to paint all your miniatures and then paint the bases first and then do one final oral oil wash all over the entire the miniature uh, to save you a day of drying. All right, well, the last step we're gonna do now is now that we let that stuff dry and cure, the next thing we're gonna do, of course, is to rim the bases. In this case, I like to use uh, Sky Blue by Folk Art. It's a nice kind of bluish gray sky blue color that we use for all the bases. I use that color specifically for our Nicaragua miniatures. It's the same kind of color motif I use for almost all, this, all the gangs that we use in our in our campaigns. And I think it just kind of looks kind of nice, kind of lends itself well to that fighting in urban environments type of look. So I run the bases in sky blue, and as you can see, just put two thin coats on that, and these guys are almost almost done. So the last step, of course, is to do a spray varnish. Of course, this step is optional. I don't like that bright kind of candy color sheen that's going on with these guys. I like my miniatures to be more matte and, and muted looking. I know some people like that high gloss finish. If you like that high gloss finish, you can skip this next step. But what I use is Krylon Matte Spray. I can get this stuff in my local Walmart for about $5.99. Just do a quick spray over the entire miniature. As you can see, a lot of that detail we couldn't see before from the shiny gloss of the miniature have now been muted. You can see all the individual folds of cloth. You can see the highlighting of the base coating the washing it looks really really beautiful at the same time got an awesome tabletop finish as well now what we're gonna do real quick is do a i had to do something new this video i decided to take a little quick clip by putting these miniatures on a lazy susan and then that way you get a 360 degree look on those so i'm gonna play some background music real quick and show you the final product before we move on to the shopping list All right, so let's talk about the, the materials you need to purchase from Citadel as well as Army Painter to paint up these guys the same way we did. First of all, you need to buy a can of Corax White Spray, which is going to cost you $17. Next, you need to buy a Creed Camo, which is going to cost you $7.80. After that, you need to purchase Thunderhawk Blue, Bane Brain Brown, Hexos Pale Sun, Everland Sunset, Nagaroth Knight, Militarum Green, Vulcan Green, Longbeard Gray, Pink Fulcrum, Teclas Blue, Caliban Green, Screamer Pink, Cyberite Green, Blue Horror, all those costing you $4.55. Per pot. You also need to buy Wildwood, which costs you $7.80 for that one, as well as Baylor Brown, Gauss Blaster Green, Ultimon Gray, Eshin Gray, Troll Slayer Orange, all those costing you $4.55. You also need to buy a pot of Talisar Blue, which is $7.80, as well as Mephiston Red, XV88, and Rakarth Flesh, both of all those colors costing you $4.55 a piece. Now, for your metallic colors, you need to buy Lead Belcher, as well as Screaming Bell, as well as Retributor Armor, all those are going to cost you $7.80 for those. You also need to buy Rust Gray and Ultimon Gray for your bases for $4. 
455. If you decide to do the quick paint method, you'll need to buy a can of Army Painter Strong Tone for $32, as well as a can of Minotonium Varnish for $17 for that matte finish. And if you plan on texturing your bases, you need to buy a pot of Astro Granite, which really costs you $7.80. Now, assuming you're purchasing all these materials from Citadel as well as Army Painter for the very first time, you're talking about a grand total investment of $225.25 by using Army Painter as well as Games Workshop products to create the same effect that we did using our craft paints. Now when you compare that with the Cheapskate method, which is going to cost you $33.82 in order to paint that way, you're talking about a grand total savings of $191.43 being saved by using our Cheapskate method. So there you guys go. If you're looking for a method to quickly, as well as more importantly, cheaply paint up your Kill Team Crew Kin Bands, uh, here's an example of how to do so. It's very quick, very easy. It took me about a week to paint these guys up and I saved a ton of money at the exact same time for an awesome tabletop finish. That's good for this week guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest greatest hot news related to this channel. That's good for this week guys. I will catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.